Science fiction often talks about the future, for good or for bad. In this lecture, I tell you what we can learn from these stories. Can science fiction save us from an apocalypse? This is the University of the Netherlands. Do you sometimes feel like the world is too complex to understand? Do you suffer from hyperinformation, an overload of information? Do you believe that because the present is difficult, it is harder and harder to plan on the future? I happen to know a tool that can help understand both the present and future. Science fiction. Science fiction is not only about robots fighting with laser guns in interstellar ships. It is way more than that. It can be very useful to understand the present and prepare better futures. Even though it's fiction, science fiction can reflect on societies and speculate on possible futures. It's been called the literature of ideas, but I prefer to name it the what-if genre. Norman Spinrad dared to say science fiction is anything published as science fiction. What he meant is science fiction is so rich that trying to put it in a box is futile. Still, let's try to understand what science fiction can be about. Firstly, science fiction is not always about science. Take the classic Dune, for instance, written by Frank Herbert. In 1965, Herbert imagined a world in a very distant future where artificial intelligence has been banned and where special humans, the mantas, are being trained to replace computers. Authors like Becky Chamber or Octavia Butler also do not consider that science is central to the story. What matters is how society could develop in the future in alternate histories or in parallel universes. Secondly, science fiction does not predict the future. In its short history, science fiction has been more often wrong than right about potential futures. Science fiction has a more powerful function, though. It can invent. If it's possible to imagine something, it might also be possible to make it happen. Mark Twain didn't invent the internet but he came up with the idea in a short story in 1898 called From the London Times in 1904. Many years later, Neil Stevenson did not invent the metaverse, but he described it in his novel Snow Crash in 1992. Most of the technological tools that we're using have to be imagined first, and science fiction has been a precursor for many. The shape of the cell phone takes its inspiration from the communicator in Star Trek. In the words of Martin Cooper from Motorola, that was not fantasy to us. That was an objective. There is a long list of ideas in science fiction that became reality. Let's not forget that one of the first science fiction books written by Jules Verne, From Earth to Moon in 1865, was mocked upon its publishing. Its critics claimed the novel was not being realistic, by describing humans to set foot on the moon using a special rocket. Thirdly, science fiction has the capacity to prevent by warning us about potential dangers lurking in our futures. Some science fiction can be quite depressive, especially the so-called subgenre of dystopian futures. The most famous example is 1984 written in 1948 by George Orwell. Orwell wanted to warn its readers of the dangers of a democracy at war and how using propaganda could damage freedom and destroy individual thoughts. 1984 is still very relevant today in a world where words are twisted in a modern newspeak. Science fiction can warn us but we usually don't listen, like the Greek myth of Cassandra. We would see future disasters, but no one would believe her. In the words of the great Ursula Le Guin, science fiction is a metaphor of the present. It's neither prophetic nor childish, and it can be very useful to understand the present and develop better options in the future. 
To illustrate this function, I would like to tell you the shortest science fiction story I know about preventing the future. Its author is unknown, but the story is part of an exercise popularized by Hemingway called Six Word Stories. Here goes. Sticks, spares, swords, guns, nukes, sticks. Even in six words, you can have a strong story warning us about the future. But usually, science fiction novels are much longer, as they deal with complex ideas. For instance, I often think of one of my favorite authors, Philip K. Dick, when I'm in need of a tool to analyze reality. His work has been very influential for generations of readers, and he's still the most adapted science fiction author in Hollywood, with films such as Blade Runner, Total Recall, or Minority Report. Dick's ability to discuss alternate realities and future nightmares is one of his main strengths. One of the most interesting concepts from Dick is disrecognition. Disrecognition means the action or process of not recognizing anymore. The idea of disrecognition is to try and go beyond the reality we live in to understand what elements have been fabricated. An example of disrecognition is time out of joint. In this novel, published in 1959, Dick tells the story of Ruggle Gum, an average man living in an American suburb in 1959. Gum's life is simple and repetitive. Every day, he plays and wins a game in a newspaper called Where Will the Little Green Man Be Next? But slowly, strange things happen to Gum's life. One day, a soft drink stand disappears to be replaced by a bit of paper with the words soft drink stand printed in capital letters. Gum thinks he's slowly becoming insane, but he will realize that he lives in a reality fabricated by the US government. In the real world, he lives in 1998, and the war is raging between Earth and lunar colonists. The game of the little green man is actually a way for Gum, a former US Army officer, to predict where the colonist nuclear strikes will land on Earth. To preserve Gum's sanity, the US Army has built a replica of a perfect town set in anywhere USA. By questioning reality, Gum is able to practice disrecognition, see the reality more clearly, and escape a world of illusions. Many movies use the idea of disrecognition, that Immanuel Kant call thing in itself. The Truman Show, or The Matrix, have famously used the idea that the world we perceive is not the real one. This recognition is a powerful tool to acquire better information, as it allows individuals to go beyond fabricated realities and help understand that different worlds are possible. If you think hard about the world we live in and question it, you might understand that maybe there is an alternative. Just be careful not to fall into the traps of conspiracy theories that claim powerful organizations are running the world and manipulate us. This recognition is about being critical, not embracing comfortable fairy tales. Science fiction is an amazing tool for the present, but also for the future. As explained, it has the ability to invent and prevent. Many organizations in the world are using science fiction to try and understand what the future could be, or better yet, to design it. Future studies is an example of how science fiction can be combined with a solid methodology to think about the future. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present? controls the past, famously said the novel 1984. One way to work on the future is to use science fiction prototyping. It combines storytelling and research to think about desirable futures. Science fiction prototyping will tell stories about the future, 
which is always more influential for human readers than a complex scientific report on what should be done about the future. Are you ready to work on the future? Reading in general is a wonderful way to become smarter and better informed. But reading science fiction can also be very beneficial if you want to understand the present better. I would like to strongly suggest two books. The first one is the classic from 1953, Fahrenheit 451, by Ray Bradbury. In a not-so-distant future, firefighters are burning books to prevent unhappiness so that the government can control the masses more easily. I often wonder how Bradbury would write his book again if he witnessed today's world with social media. Are there still books to be burned when almost no one reads on paper? Another book that should not be burned is The Carpet Makers by Andreas Esbach. Written in 1995, the novel starts on the planet where entire families spend a lifetime making carpets out of human hair. I won't say more but this. If you don't like this book, let me know, and I will be happy to refund you. Just kidding, I'm but a humble professor, but it's still a great book. When it comes to films, there are plenty of good ones, and science fiction remains the most profitable genre in Hollywood. My personal trilogy is the original Blade Runner, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Brazil. These three movies already provide much reflection about the futures, but also about the present of humankind. So, can science fiction save us from the apocalypse? It's probably more up to us and how we can benefit from thinking about the future. Science fiction can be used to understand the world better, but also to make the world better. Science fiction is not a magic wand but it can help humankind tremendously at moments when hope seems lost.